everyone, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel Read M. This weekend is actually fall break at my university so I thought this would be the perfect time to just cozy up with a fall book and vlog some of the autumn energy that I will hopefully get to experience this weekend and my mom's actually coming to visit so there should be some fun things happening, maybe some restaurants, some food that I'll insert throughout here and I'm gonna try to make this a little bit of like an aesthetic vlog but I also have the perfect book to read for it. So I recently picked up All These Bodies by Kendara Blake and it's super short which I feel like is conducive to this long weekend so I can just read this entire thing in like one go. This is a thriller crime you know mystery situation and I haven't read anything from this author but I feel like this could be like the perfect thing. Also let me just say that I love this cover. Look at that. This is the spine and oh my god the back so much fear over one little girl. I just feel like this could be really, really fun. And oh my god, underneath, stop, look at that. I'm gonna definitely in my room at home store this on the shelf without the jacket because I have a whole shelf that's like naked hardcovers and this one would look it will look good. So I'm just gonna do a little quick synopsis before I get into this weekend and my reading of this book. Okay, so it says 16 bloodless bodies, two teenagers, one impossible explanation. Summer 1958, a string of murder plagues the Midwest. The victims are found in their cars and in their homes, even in their beds, their bodies drained but with no blood anywhere. September 19th, the Carlson family is slaughtered in their Minnesota farmhouse and the case gets its first lead. 15 year old Marie Catherine Hale is found at the scene. She's covered in blood from head to toe and at first she's mistaken for a survivor, but not a drop of the blood is hers. Michael Jensen, son of the local sheriff, yearns to become a journalist and escape his small town. He never imagined that the biggest story in the country would fall onto his lap, or that he would be pulled into the investigation when Marie decides that he is the only one she will confess to. As Marie recounts her version of the story, it falls on Michael to find the truth. What really happened the night that the Carlsons were killed? And how did one girl wind up in the middle of all these bodies? That sounds really good. Honestly, it really reminds me of the dynamic between Kat and Spencer in Chrono Lines. I don't know if anyone's seen that. I mean, it's a little different because Spencer's from the FBI and like Kat's like crazy, but like, I mean, I don't know if this girl's crazy. I don't know what's gonna happen between them, but it's kind of giving me some Kat and Spencer energy, which I'm always looking for. And yeah, so I'm super excited to get into this weekend. I'm gonna maybe even try to decorate my room a little for fall. I'm, I don't know, I don't have any dec decorations really, but I might like just switch up my letter board, something more fun. I will update you guys once I get started with this. So I just got back from a fun day that I spent with my mom because she's actually here visiting. We went to an art museum and I'm sure she's watching this, so you know, hello. And we also got food. So I have read some more of All These Bodies by Kendara Blake. I am now on chapter 12 and I'm really enjoying it so far. I have to say, I started listening to the audiobook last night because I just wanted to listen to it while I was like doing some laundry. And I love the audiobook. I think probably more than I just enjoy re reading it with my eyes. Like I highly recommend the audiobook so far because the main character is a guy and I don't know, I don't usually have this problem, but I feel like I wasn't really understanding his voice correctly when I was reading it in my head because once I started listening to the audiobook, I was just like way more obsessed with it. Like it sounds almost like a movie. The narrator is amazing. He uses so many different voices. Like when characters whisper, he actually whispers. It's just way more engaging, way more like creepy. I've just gotten to a point where our main character is going to interview the girl that is like a potential suspect and he doesn't really understand how she could possibly be involved in all this like she's just a young girl so i'm really excited to see where that goes i think i'm like over a quarter of the way in now it's a pretty short book and i'm hoping i can honestly finish this this afternoon <laughs> You know, I've also decided that I've had this sign say this since like last year, last semester. So I've decided I think I'm going to use some of these and listen to my audiobook and make this say something spooky for Halloween because I saw these little charms and there's a little moon that's so cute. So I think I'm going to do that right now while I listen to my audiobook and I might time lapse some of that. So stay tuned to see.
I have this ginger ale right here because of the turmoil I have just gone through reading this book. You know, I need to calm my stomach. That's why this is happening. <laughs> no, so in all seriousness, I have the ginger ale because as you saw in my video, I ate a lot of food today and you know, sometimes the stomach can be a little upset by that. I also had a giant ice cream after all that food. So like that certainly didn't help. Anyway, this book also did not help, but I am very, very, very excited to say that this is a five-star book and this is only the second five-star book of this entire year for me besides reread the other one was the anthropocene reviewed by john green which like i knew was gonna be five star from the moment that i heard about it so this is the first five-star read for me for this entire year keep in mind it is october and it's by an author i have never read from before and the best part about all of that is that this book is going to be so many people's least favorite book. Like people are gonna hate the ending. People are gonna hate where this goes. But for me, mm, 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 mm. this was perfect. This was everything I needed. I bought this book yesterday, randomly on a complete whim. I just saw it and I was like, you know what? You know what? I think I need it. And I read the entire thing within 24 hours. And I'm so glad I did because this is the only book that I like loved, loved, loved this year. I mean, there's so many I really liked, but this and the Anthropocene Reviewed are the only five stars. They're the only ones besides rereads and you know that is quite a feat i thought that something was going wrong with me with reading even with young adult but here we are a young adult thriller got me through there is so much that i loved about this and some of it i can't say because it's a spoiler but i'll try to describe the best i can what i can't say the reason that i really really enjoyed this experience i think i have to give credit to the audiobook now the narrator of the audiobook was just absolutely spectacular he brought the entire thing to life for me and honestly without that like i don't know i don't know what would have happened like i still think i would have loved this book of course but i don't think i would have read it nearly as quickly and i'm just so glad that i had that available to me what this book does really really well is capture the small town like farm vibes like perfectly i just really wanted to embrace some fall energy i was having you know my fall ambiance in the background as i showed you guys and i could feel every little branch every little crunched leaf because of that not only was it that ambiance but also because of this book there's so much description of just these very mundane moments that happen like at night with friends in the back of a pickup truck or the descriptions of just even people's houses how they lived on these like sprawling fields with abandoned barns and how they just pull up their car on the dirt roads just all of that was handled so well like in the small town every single little character knew each other so intimately even though you know a larger town you know like these random people wouldn't know each other in this small area black deer falls everyone knows everyone and everyone can blame everyone or know secrets about everyone and it just makes the dynamic that much better besides that aspect the things that i really loved about this thriller that really made it work for me and become a favorite are two main things one of them is the relationship between the girl that is a potential suspect or accomplice and the main character who is the only person that she agrees to speak to about what's happened i just think that their dynamic is so fascinating you know throughout the story you go from mike our main character thinking that this girl must be innocent to you know kind of maybe some suspicions but then to also him not being able to resist feeling empathy and i feel like that dynamic was just so interesting to think about because it's like you can never really know the truth and even if you did know the truth it's hard to say whether or not a person in this position deserves sympathy or empathy. You know, it brings up the question of to what extent is someone a victim versus culpable, that kind of thing. And I just think this had brought up so many questions. And then the other thing that I loved about it is a spoiler. So I'm going to put something on the screen that you can scroll past if you do not want to hear any potential spoilers. So the other thing that I love about this book is the paranormal speculative element that I was not expecting. So we come to find out that Marie says that the person that actually did these killings was someone that they call the blood drinker and that he's a vampire. And, you know, at first everyone thinks, well, she's lying, you know, she's making this up so that she doesn't look guilty because obviously it's not a vampire. Like, how is that even possible? But as the story goes on, things just aren't adding up. And at the end of this book, most questions are not answered. None of your questions will really be answered at all. But 
I think that's the whole point. The very ending where Mike just decides, like, you know, he wants to help her. He feels bad for her and he will decapitate her body if it means that she won't come back as a vampire because he believes, you know, maybe she is a vampire and even if she isn't, why should I not honor this last true request? I just loved how the questions were unanswered, which I don't always like, but in this instance where it's potentially about something supernatural, I like this question. You'll just always wonder how much was she making up? Like, I feel like I would definitely reread this to know because I feel like there's evidence that points to the fact that she couldn't have been making everything up. Like, there's just so much that she couldn't have done on her own. But at the same time, there was no evidence of an actual vampire. I don't know. It's very interesting. And I think I'm probably going to reread this like next fall, maybe. Like, I feel like oh, it's just a, such a good fall book. And I'd be very interested to see what I got out of it a second time. Overall, I highly recommend this book, but to a very specific subset of people, although I don't know exactly what to call that subset of people. I will say that you will hate this if you want all of your questions to be answered, because probably not a single one will be but with this ending. But I would also say that if you're someone who only sometimes likes when there's unanswered questions, I think this one is one that you would like. Like this one does it well. It's not stupid, at least to me. I mean, I bet a lot of people will think it's stupid, but to me, I think this one, like it's very purposeful with what it leaves unanswered is not lazy. And I think reading it again could bring a lot to light, but like, again, the questions aren't answered on the pages, but like, I don't know, it would just make me think about it. I want to grapple with it more. So I guess I'd say that I would recommend this book if you really want good fall energy. Small town, farms, Midwest. It's also, I didn't bring this up before, but it's technically historical. Like it takes place in the 50s. So I kind of liked that because you didn't have any like phones or technology or that kind of thing, which adds like, you know, a unique element. I would also recommend this if you want something you can read super fast or if you want a good audiobook because this was a great audiobook. And I'd also recommend this if you're okay with open-ended ending and with some potential strangeness. I will just say that. I will say potential strangeness and you can interpret that how you would like. I wish that I had more weekends where I could just devote all my time to making full vibes and reading, but you know, maybe I'll prioritize that more. And I'm gonna continue watching those like ambiance videos in the background of things because they were really fun. Like I wanna do them for other seasons too. And yeah, so this book, this book is just great. And I'm so excited that I finally have another favorite from this year because I this year has been a flop, like a reading flop for a lot of it. And this was just great and has got me really excited to keep reading things. <laughs> and I can't believe that I just picked it up on a whim. Like I didn't even have it on my to read. I think it was on my like on my radar or something like no. I'm just so glad. So thank you guys so much for watching. This weekend has been amazing. I am so, so happy that I loved this book and had so much fun this weekend. And I hope you all are enjoying your fall so far if you're living somewhere that it is currently autumn. And if not, you know, you can play some of those ambiance videos in the background if you want. And if you want a good thriller to read, I clearly recommend All These Bodies by Kendara Blake. I cannot wait to read more of her other books. I know I have to read her Three Dark Crown series. Everyone loves it. But I'm also interested now in her Anna Dress and Blood series because I like her weird thrillers. I guess that's all I have for today. If you guys have any more recommendations that are like somehow similar to that, or if you've read this, let me know what you think. I'm excited to have tried to do a reading vlog again. So let me know if you like my reading vlog, if you have any suggestions for other ways to format it. This was like one of my first times doing it clearly and I'm excited to do it again one day. So thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing and commenting down below for engagement and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!